Welcome to tonight's Tanya class. We are studying uh, Tanya. We are in the fourth section of Tanya called Igeret HaKodesh, the Holy Letters. We are in chapter Yud, Perik Yud of Igeret HaKodesh. Okay, so uh, as always, um, Tanya, every chapter is, has its own message. Um, even though everything ultimately is interconnected, but the message of uh, chapter Yud was a very, very powerful message, and that is that all of us would love to have God's infinite compassion and kindness. And the question is, if we all want God's compassion and kindness, the question is, how can we receive God's compassion and kindness? Wouldn't it be nice to have compassion from God, the infinite God? We get compassion from a human, we're all excited. But here we get it from God. So here the altar is going to teach us how we can achieve the infinite compassion and kindness from God. Okay, so the altar starts off from the book of Eicha, Lamentations, which we just uh, read on Yom Kippur. And the verse says as follows, Chazdei Hashem, the kindness of Hashem, ki loy samnu, um, which seemingly means because it does not end. Because if God is kind, and if God gives kindness, there's no end. The person gives kind, there's an end. But here it says, like Samuel, there's no end. So the altar asks a simple question. If the verse is referring to God, so then it should say, Ki Samu, because that God, referring to God himself, that God is without a limit. But what does it mean, Ki Samnu? Seemingly it's it would, would make more sense to say ki loy samu because God is non, non stopping to give versus loy samnu. The extra nun is a different. It's a different type of word. So the author explains um, and shares a novel idea which really makes a lot of sense to to translate that verse and it based on as follows. The author says like this: There's two types of chesed. Now chesed means kindness. Chesed means giving. So the author says there's two types of chesed. There's something which is called chesed oilam, kindness of world, and I'll explain in a second. And the second type is called chesed ilah, a high level of giving, or another term the altar uses, which is called rav chesed. Now, in a simple understanding of the two terms are is very simple. Chesed oilam means, and again, they're both referring to chesed, kindness and giving, but oilam is, we know, oilam is world. The world that we're living in is a limited world. So when we're dealing with a limited world, the chesed in this world is a limited type of chesed. Versus chesed, which is the high level of chesed, which is the infinite level of chesed, or the rav chesed, is obviously, obviously what? A, a infinite type of chesed. So now, so now the author is going to explain to us these two different types of chesed. He's going to start first with the first chesed, which we call chesed oilom, which is the finite type of chesed. And the author is like this. The fact is that God is infinite, and God gave us the Torah, and the Torah that's coming from God is really infinite. The mitzvot on some level is also infinite, it's God's commandments. However, since God gave us the Torah, and in order for us human beings in this world to understand and appreciate the Torah, so even though the Torah in its source is chesed, it's God giving us the Torah, nevertheless when it came down to this world there's a tinge and there's an aspect of gur in there, and we see it more specifically in the mitzvot. In the mitzvot that is a level of, of finite to it. Or as the Atreba says, in mitzvot you see more of gvura Hashem. What is Gvura? We know this Chesed where you're giving, and Gvura is where you're, you're restraining, where you're restricting, where you're holding back. So in Mitzvot, you see a lot of Gvura in there. Or for example, the author uses the idea of Eish, fire, where it's basically, it's, 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 it's limited. Or another term the author uses, Tzimtzum. We know the idea of Tzimtzum. Tzimtzum is you have, you have infinite light. In order for the infinite light to come down to this world, to us finite human beings, there has to be a contraction. Because if it was too powerful, we would not be able to appreciate and enjoy the, enjoy the Mitzvot. So there's these three components of Mitzvot that water down the Mitzvot from the infinite infinite mitzvah to the finite mitzvah, namely the gavura, which is in them, or the ash, the, 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 uh, which is uh, the fire part of it, which restricts it, because you can't have ash all over the place, you'll burn down the whole city, so ash has to be confined, and you have the idea of what? Of tzimtzum. Now, where do we see that practically? So take, for example, the idea of mitzvot. 
Is there an infinite amount of mitzvot? Infinite? Yes. Infinite yes. amount of mitzvot? Yes. No, really, it's an infinite amount. How many mitzvot are there? Infinite? Six, yeah, 600. It's a finite amount, exactly. There's a finite. What's the finite number? 613. Mitzvot according to the Torah. Torah the, we're talking about the Torah right now. The Torah's mitzvot, there's a finite amount of mitzvot. There's 613. Not only that, even in there, there's a breakdown. There is the positive mitzvot, and there's a finite amount, 248 positive mitzvot. There's a negative mitzvot, 365. So you see, what do you mean, if it's from God, why don't you just keep on pouring in the mitzvot? No, 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 because we couldn't handle more than 613. We couldn't handle more than 613. God gave us exactly what we can handle. We can handle 613. 612, we'd be saying that we're short of mitzvot. We need one more, right? Please, bring us one more. I, we need that one extra because we have a little more time in our day to do that one extra mitzvah. I'm not making a joke. That's, we would be lacking. We'd be lacking if we didn't have that perfect number 613. Versus we had 614. Whoa, God, you know, you're over, you, just, you blew it over the top. And 613 makes a huge difference. But the point is that God knew what we can handle and he gave us what we can handle. We can handle 613. That's the magic number. And we can handle when they are 248 positive, not 247 because we'd be yearning for something. Or if it was 249, it would be, oh my gosh, a little too much. And the same thing also with the negative precepts. So you see there's a specific amount of mitzvot. Namely 613, 248 positive, 365 negative. Then, if you look at each mitzvah, so for example, take any mitzvah that exists. Think of any mitzvah. Take a mezuzah, right? So is the scroll infinitely long? Is there infinite amount of letters in the mezuzah? No. The scroll is a certain size, meaning to say there's a certain amount of lines. There's a certain specific script that goes in there. And matter of fact, if you added even one letter, is that mezuzah kosher? No. no. And if you, took, if you took away a letter, is the mezuzah kosher? No. The mezuzah is very, very specific. Take, for example, tefillin. Do you wear two on your hand? No, one. God said one on the hand. One on the head. The compartments, in the, the parchment, the specific partiot that's in the hand and the head, very, very specific. The straps are specific. Kashrut, specific. This you could eat, this you can't eat. Why can, I, why can everything be kosher? Because God said, these things you have the power to elevate, and these things you don't have the power to elevate. And go down mitzvah by mitzvah, every one of the 613 mitzvot, you will see that they are specific details to every single part of the mitzvahs. Not only that, for example, are mitzvot done in the abstract? No, they're physical items that you need, for example, you want to bring a sukkah, you want to bring, you want to build a sukkah, so you need walls, physical items, little of an esrig, you need a willow, the, 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 the etrog, the, 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 other, the, other, the other species go together with the etrog. Every single mitzvah is very, very specific. Shabbos, you want to observe Shabbat Monday afternoon. Does that work? No! It's Friday night from, sun, from, well, be, sun, uh, from sundown, before sundown, till Saturday night. That's it. You see that Torah is very, very specific. Not only that, then you're going to say to me, what do you mean? There's something which is called love. We have a mitzvah to love God, right? Or we have a mitzvah to be in awe of God. Is there, there, is there a limit to that? For example, everyone knows love, right? Love, you can love, right? Is there, a, is there a limit to how much you can love God? No. There's no limit? You can just love God until your soul leaves your body? It's kind of dangerous. No. There is a limit to how much love. The after some, God says you should love Him with whole your heart. There's, there's three limits. But could you do more than, could you and should you do more than that? No. Don't do more than that. You're being in awe of God. There's a specific requirement of how much, not too much, not too little. In other words, if you're going to be just in love with God 24-7 and not take care of your body and not do any other mitzvot, but I'm in love with God, is that what God wants? No. If you're going to be in awe of God, oh my gosh, I'm frozen. I can't move, right? And meanwhile, you're not going to study, you're not going to pray, you're not going to take care of your family. Is are you over going overboard in awe of God? Absolutely. So even in love and awe, which is seemingly intangible mitzvot, guess what? They are tangible. There, there's a specific, a specific requirement to it. Why? Because God wants to give us specific mitzvot that we can handle. 
Now, where does that come from? Where does that come from? That comes from the idea of tzimtzum. That comes from the idea of gvura. It's the way it's contained, and the way it's specific, and the way it's limited. Ultimately, it comes from where? From God giving or not giving? It's from God giving or not giving? So the source is God's giving us. Sure, it's chesed. God is giving us an opportunity to connect to Him. God is giving us 613 ways to connect to Him. But is that chesed unlimited, or is it finite? It's finite. It's chesed oilom. It's chesed. God's giving us ways to connect to Him through Torah study, through prayer, through doing every one of the mitzvot. But it's chesed olam because it is very defined and very specific to the amount of time and the amount of space when it starts, when it ends, and so on and so forth. Now, let's take for example, we know that there are three pillars that the world stands on. What are the three pillars? Torah, Torah very good. Prayer, prayer very good. And no, what's the specific one? What specific mitzvah? Huh? Tzedakah. Very good. Tzedakah, charity, exactly. So we're dealing now with the three pillars. Now, could you study Torah 24-7? No, you have other responsibilities. You've got to sleep, take care of your body. You've got to eat, you've got to take care of your family, you've got to work. And there's other mitzvah to do. Um, prayer. Could you and should you study 24-7? No. no, there's other things to do. Appropriate things. Now, charity. Right? So charity is just dollars, cents, pounds, euros, whatever the currency is, right? Bitcoins, right? Whatever the currency of... of gift uh, cards. Huh? Gift, gift, cards, gift, cards, right? gift cards, gift cards, stocks, bonds, right? Cars, houses, airplanes, all right, the list goes on. But the point is when a person gives charity, the person gives charity, and this is one of the three pillars, do you give infinite amount of charity? No. 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 How much do you give to charity? 20%. So you, the official amount is 10%. That's what you're obligated to give. And if you want, you can up it to how much? 20. 20. And could you give more? The official requirement, no. After 20, you should not give. The Talmud says don't give more than 20%. What do you mean? But charity. Why am I giving charity? God commanded me. God gave me an opportunity to connect him through charity. And if I give charity, I am doing what God wanted. And I am practicing chesed. But guess what? Can I practice an infinite amount of charity? No. Nobody could. Why? And here's the point. So the author was saying is that because chesed, the first type of chesed is called chesed oilam, chesed that's given to us in this physical world where we're finite and we have limits. So any chesed that takes place in this world has finite limits. It's chesed, 100%, but it's called chesed oilam because it's limited to the world. Now, it so comes along the author and he says, guess what? What, what's the reason why God gave us all the mitzvot? Why did God give us any of the mitzvot? Why do we observe the mitzvot? To to so let's look, when you do a mitzvah, you usually make a blessing. What's the blessing you make? Baruch atah Hashem al-Kenim al-Kalam. And what, we bless God. And it says specifically, Asher, that, Kiddishanu, God sanctified us with the mitzvot. What does that mean? If, and not if, when we do mitzvot, we become sanctified. We become holy. So when we do a mitzvah, it means God says do this mitzvah, whatever it may be, and the 613 to choose from. Pick anyone, think of anyone that you're doing right now. So on one hand, you can say, I'm doing the mitzvah. And that is correct. But what are you doing, what are you, when you're doing the mitzvah, what's happening to you? You know what's happening to you? There's a certain aura. There's a certain glory, kiddishanu. You're becoming sanctified. Like the spiritual ointment that's going on you. So every time you do the mitzvah, you are glowing and shining. Sometimes you feel it, sometimes you don't. But when you do a mitzvah, you feel great. Right? When you do a mitzvah, do you feel great? Yeah. Why do you feel great? And that is Kiddishonu. Because when you do a mitzvah, you're being sanctified. Now, what happens if you had an opportunity to do a mitzvah and you missed the opportunity? It happens. You know, there's 248 positive commandments and you missed an opportunity. Whether you missed a prayer service, whether you missed an opportunity to study Torah, or you missed an opportunity to help somebody, you had an opportunity that you could have done and you didn't do it. Or, for example, on the, on the, on, if you had, there was a negative precept you shouldn't have done, a mistake you went ahead and you transgressed it. What happens to you now? So two things. If you missed an opportunity, you know what happens? 
that extra special shine that you could have got, you didn't get. Or if you transgressed the negative, that shine that you had went away from you. When a person unfortunately sins, the Tzalem Elohim, the godly aura that's around you, starts getting tarnished. And you start becoming dull. Dull physically, spiritually, mentally, in all levels you become dull. The more mitzvot and the more prayer and the more Torah study you do, the sharper spiritually you become and affects you physically and all levels. But what happens when you miss opportunities, you start dulling out. Now, what's one thing we can never make up? Something that's missed. To pray more than more. Okay, but more specific. True. What, why is that? Why is that? I want to get down to practical. What, what is that? Because time you cannot go, but you cannot go and turn the clock back. I mean, people do that, by the way, but it doesn't really work. People, I've seen people turn the clock back, but hello, you're only fooling yourself. You didn't turn the, you turned the physical clock back, but you can take back lost time. Notice this moment that we have right now, that we're studying Torah, that's a gift, and we're using it right, Baruch Hashem. If at this moment, let's say we wasted this minute, this minute you never get back. The next minute you can do something else, I got it. But this minute, right now, this moment, if you don't use it, it's gone. Every moment that God gives us a gift, we use it or we lose it. Use it, lose it. So if you use it to put on the shine on you, guess what? You got the shine. So what happens, like, it's a practical example. From 9 to 10 in the morning, or 9 to 10 at night, you sit around you do nothing. And you could have done many mitzvot and you don't do it. Guess what? You lost shining yourself up spiritually. 10 o'clock you go, oh my gosh, I, I, need, I need to connect to God. And you sit down and you study Torah, you pray, do mitzvot. Wonderful, you're going to get a shine. But are you going to get the shine from 9 to 10? No, that's gone. That is gone. So it comes along the altar, and the altar says, guess what? There's an opportunity to make up for lost time. There's an opportunity, and this is beautiful over here, that you have an opportunity to make up for lost time. A lot of times you come up, oh my gosh, I made a mistake, I missed. So I, 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 there's no makeup. We know tshuva is one of the most beautiful things of Judaism. Tshuva means I'm able to make up for lost time. So it comes along God, and God says, guess what? <clears throat> you have the ability to make up for lost time. How can you do that? By doing a mitzvah that you normally do, that's not making up for lost time. And notice from 9 to 10, if you didn't study, or you didn't pray, you didn't do the mitzvah, and, nine, and 10 o'clock you do it, how are you making up for lost time? You're doing the 10 o'clock one. So what do you have to do? You have to do something that's so powerful that not only does it cover 10 to 11, but it's also covering from 9 to 10. Or something it's not only we're talking for an hour, something you're trying to make up for a week, or a month, or years. So you have to do something so powerful. When you do something so powerful, it draws down, as the author said before, what's, what's, what's the type of chesed? It's called chesed ilo'o, a high, infinite power of chesed. Rab chesed, an extremely powerful chesed. So when a person goes ahead and, um, and does tshuva, I mean to say is, oh my gosh, he's willing to go ahead and feel bad for what he did wrong, that's the first part of tshuva, and not only feel bad, but actually do things that he would never normally do, and give in ways he would never normally give, guess what? You know what happens? Now, not only are you doing something great now, but you're even making up for things that you missed before. How do you go about doing that? Wouldn't that be great? Who would want to make up for lost time? Huh? Everybody. So here the author is going to teach you how you can make up for lost time. And he says like this. Generally speaking, what is tshuva? So the Rambam writes, what is tshuva? Tshuva means, and let's use the example before, 10 o'clock you go, oh my gosh, I really wasted an hour from 9 to 10. And you can multiply it days and weeks and months. I really wasted it. I really feel bad. So is that tshuva? That's tshuva. According to the Rambam, you say, oh my gosh, I wasted an hour, I feel terrible about it, I hope God forgives me, I want to get back on the path. So you say it, in, you, say, you feel it, you say it, that's tshuva, got it. But the Altar says, that's wonderful. But in order for tshuva to translate um, into real reality, 
you have to do something tangible that will make the tshuva real. You know, what, what's, called, what's called making the tshuva real? So the object is very simple. What are you trying to accomplish? You're trying to accomplish bringing down Rav Chesed, this infinite abundance of kindness into your life, to make up for the shine that you missed. Now it covers for you now, but it's covering you for the past. And you want to bring down this powerful light of, of, of Chesed. So it's not enough to say it and feel it. So the object is you have to practice Chesed. Now we know in Judaism, and Kabbalah teaches us, that you don't have to look out, you have to look deep in. So, how do you bring down chesed? You know, so there's an expression that says that schar mitzvah is the mitzvah. It means that you, you know, let's say, for example, someone works. And you work, so you don't get paid to work, you get paid a check, you get paid money, whatever you get paid. But the real reward of the mitzvah is what? Not something else. The reward of the mitzvah is the mitzvah itself. So therefore, if you're trying to accomplish chesed, chesed should be all over you. You want to try to make up that you should have this, this shine over you. You need to do chesed. What is chesed? What is chesed? And this is so powerful. The other is very simple. You know what chesed is? Think of the word. Chesed is made up of two words. Ches and samach means chas. That means you, you, you feel bad. And dalit stands for a dalis, a person that's poor and destitute. So when you feel bad for somebody that's poor and destitute, and not just feel bad in your heart, but you actually feel bad, and you turn that bad feeling that you have for that person into reality, and you actually go ahead and help somebody that's poor and destitute, not just what you would normally give, but you would give as much as you can, and even then some, and as you would give without a limit. So as you're going to practice what? You're going to practice chesed. And again, what does chesed mean? You're going to have compassion, you're going to feel bad for someone that's poor and destitute, and you're going to give him what? Infinite amount of chesed. Guess what you're doing now, the altruist says. You are behaving just like God behaves. Why? Think about it. God is the ultimate, who's the richest person in the world? No, not Bill Gates or Bezos or all these people, or Walmart. Who's the richest person in the world? God's the richest. He has everything. And not only, you can't even compare, God's infinite. So God, not only is the richest money in everything, God creates, God maintains, God is the richest person in the world. Who's he helping? Everybody. Everybody. So compared to God, is anybody rich? Or compared to God, is everyone poor? Everyone's not only poor, everyone's destitute. Because the only reason why we exist, and we continue to exist, is because this infinite God practices what? Chesed. He's chas. He feels bad for all of us poor and destitute people. And when does God do that? Once a year? Once a month? Every Once second. a week? Every second. Every second, what is God doing? Every second, God is feeling bad for us, and He's supplying us with oxygen, water, food, buildings, trees, friends, anything that you need at any moment, who's giving it to you? Not your employer. Not your neighbor. Not your whoever it may be that you think is giving it to you. You know who's giving it to you? God is giving it to you. When is God giving? Always. So God is always giving us everything we need. Now, if we practice the way God practices chesed, guess what? When are we going to do chesed? Always. Any opportunity that we have to help somebody that's poor and destitute, we do it. Why? Because when does God do it? Always. So God is always practicing chesed, chas, for a, someone that, that's poor and destitute. So therefore we are always trying to practice what God practices. And as long as we're practicing what God practices, guess what happens? We're behaving like God prays. Now, guess what? So is there, a, is there a finite amount of charity we can give? No. You can give charity a whole life. You can give charity a whole life. What does that mean? If you have money, you give money. If you have time, you give time. 
if you have a kind word, guess what? We have an, does anybody have a limit on words they can say? No. Some of us more than others, right? But you can constantly give someone a kind word, say something uplifting, say something inspiring. We can constantly practice chesed, infinitely. So therefore, the altar says, guess what? What's more powerful, charity or sacrifices? Charity. charity. Because a sacrifice, guess what? Is a specific animal, a specific size, that has to be with, without a blemish. You can only bring it in the times of the temple, and you, could, you can't bring one every, five, every, every, every second. I mean, there's only so much room on the altar, and so on and so forth. But charity, you can do always. So in other words, compared to sacrifices, charity is unlimited. Now, comes on and says, one second. Didn't we say before that there's a limit to charity? And we said, what's the limit? 10% or 20% max. So the algorithm says, guess what? The limit for 10% is 20%. That's as long as you have never sinned in your life. If you never sinned, give 10, 20%. But what happens, the says, let me ask you some, a simple question. Normally, right, you have a normal budget for your family, for yourself and your family. What you spend on this, that, the other thing. What does God forbid if somebody gets sick in the family? And all of a sudden you go to the doctor and they say you need a certain procedure and it costs an exorbitant amount of money, more than you've probably earned in the last five years. Uh, you, no, 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 uh, no. Not enough money, I'm just not going to deal with it. Did that ever happen? No. You beg, you borrow, you put a, do a charity, a GoFundMe, you do a campaign, right? You call family. Why? Because you're sick and you need help. So you get, fu you get funded and you get the proper health. Ah, when a person, God forbid, sinned, and didn't necessarily, and you missed that opportunities, and you're trying to make up, and you're trying to heal yourself spiritually. So you should, give, should you give a limit? No, you do anything. So therefore, when we say, when the author quoted the verse from 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 Eicha from Lamentations, Chaz de Hashem. So what kind of Chesed is of Hashem? Is Hashem's Chesed finite or infinite? Infinite. infinite. Now, Hashem's chesed is infinite. Now, could we practice that type of chesed? Yes. Now, normally, do we have to? No. We, we have a finite amount of charity. We have not finite amount of how many we give away to other people. But what happens, the Prophet says, chaz de Hashem, when do we have to practice the type of chesed that Hashem practices? Kilo Samra is not referring to God. Kilo Samra means because we are not complete. Chazde Hashem, we have to practice the type of chesed Hashem practices. What's the type of chesed Hashem practices? The infinite type of chesed. Why? Ki loy samra, because we're not complete. Doctors, what's the proof that we're not complete? How do we know we're not complete? How do we know we're not complete? Maybe we're complete. Maybe we never sinned. Maybe we're perfect. How do you know? Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. Why not? The author has proof. What's the proof? Think about it. Very simple. The Alchemist says, very simple, because if we were all perfect, yes. Yes. the temple would be here, the Mashiach would be here. We wouldn't, the temple wouldn't have been destroyed. If we were perfect, would the temple have been destroyed? No. No, one said, if, the, if we were perfect, the temple would not have been destroyed, and let's say, for example, it was destroyed, and we became back perfect, you don't think God would have given us a temple? So obviously, we're missing something. I'm not saying it's a lot or a little. I don't know the amount. But one thing I can tell you, we're not perfect. The Alter says so, we're not perfect. So since Lai Samuel, we're not perfect, and the proof is, what's the proof? Because the temple has been destroyed and has been rebuilt, and Mashiach is not here, Ki Lai Samnu, we're not complete. So guess what? What kind of chesed do we have to practice? The infinite type of chesed. Now, what happens, and this is key, what happens when we recognize that we're not complete and we start practicing chesed Hashem? We're kind infinitely. We're nice infinitely. We don't judge infinitely. You know what happens? The verse finishes off. Now, when we start acting like chesed Hashem, you know what happens? God starts opening up the gates of compassion towards us. So we have the power to receive the greatest compassion from God. How? By being practicing Chazde Hashem. When we practice the infinite type of Chesed, we're nice, we're kind, and we don't look at how much we've done, how much I did already my fear, share, we keep on doing, you know what happens? God, we're acting like Chazde Hashem, then God says, give him compassion. 
And guess what? When you start feeling God's compassion, it really feels good because it's coming from the infinite place of God. And the author will finish it off and says, this is what the Chazal teach us, that Ein Yisrael Nigalin Elabetz Daka, that the Jewish people will be redeemed. In other words, we're in exile now. We want, to, we want to go out. We want to be freed. We want the Messiah to come. So we will be refreed. Key one thing. He doesn't say Torah study, even though it's important to study Torah. He doesn't say prayer, even though it's important to pray. And he doesn't say doing all the mitzvot, even though it's important to do all the mitzvot. He says specifically, specifically charity. And why charity? And he says, because what kind of charity is? Charity, not the charity that you have to give the 10%. Not the charity you want to give 20%. When you give the charity that you don't necessarily have to give, and you don't have to give it and you're doing it anyway, that means you're going ahead and drawing in Chaz De Hashem, then we will merit to receive God's infinite blessing of Chesed. And if God gives us the infinite Chesed, guess what we will have? We will have the true redemption. So here you see how this chapter... 10 of Igarat Coach is extremely powerful because it shows you in a real way that if you want to achieve and you want to receive God's greatest compassion and God's greatest chesed is for us to practice the chesed of God, which is infinite. And even though you're going to say, what do you mean, I only have so, an obligation to do so much, that's, that's not true, the Alter says. Because we're not complete, we are living in a times when people do sin, and we all have sinned on whatever level that we, we, we know or we do know or consciously or subconsciously, and we're not complete. So therefore, we, since we're not complete, we need to come on to the infinite chesed of Hashem uh, to, to take us out of Gola. So we need to practice the infinite chesed, and we practice the infinite chesed when we're kind, even when we feel like we already did our fair share, God will give us the greatest kindness, God will give us the greatest compassion, and we'll have the greatest and best life ever. Thank you.